Yes, uh, I was a very slow starter. I um, I couldn't read the the bass clef until I was fifteen, um, and I uh, got into the uh, in the secondary school. There was a, a possibility from the second year to get into a specialized music class, and that was not my plan. But a girl uh, I was in love with asked me. And of course, I said yes. <laughs> I will, I will, I will attend the class. Well, it it seemed uh, I I it was the right thing for me to do, and uh, I I almost um, well a, a a key moment I think was in the in the in the choir. We had a, a, a Christmas uh, concert in the secondary school coming up and uh, in middle of the of the fall uh, semester uh, we were going to sing a spiritual there's a star in the east on christmas morn rise up and the first was unison and then came this rise up four part choir and it blew me completely away um and since then I must have been. I must have been fifteen or something like that, and since then, uh, it was no option not to do anything with choir. So um, then I got to university in Copenhagen, um, and it was still interesting. I, I, I found I attended a good choir in Copenhagen, and. After some years, I decided, to the great disappointment of my parents, that I wanted to be a conductor. Because, and then they, of course, they asked, "What, what are you going to live from?" Because, and uh, I couldn't tell them, but I had to do it. So, I, uh, I attended the the conservatory in Copenhagen. The Royal College of Music, I think it's called in Royal Academy of Music in, in Copenhagen. And after some years, I became a teacher there and uh, at the university as well. And um, then, 1999, I was asked by the Gewandhaus in Leipzig uh, whether I would be interesting. Uh, interested in being their uh, chief of choral activities, and um, it was a big step for me because uh, I would have to um, uh, what you say in English when you when you I had to quit. Yes, I had to quit as a professor at the. Conservatory. I had to quit as a teacher at the university. I had to sell my house. I had to take my family to Leipzig, which at that time looked like a construction field. But it was just for five years. Um, but it then turned out that it was more than five years. And afterwards, I I was. Uh, asked uh, to be interested in uh, a full professorship in uh, at a, uh, a music university in South Germany in Freiburg, and that's where I teach now. Uh, the first batch comprises seventeen volumes, and uh, there are two collections by Brahms. His Opus 62 and 104. There are two collections uh, by Mendelssohn, uh, Lieder im Freien zu singen. Um, there are Christmas carols uh, and traditional English church music. 
there are also five Danish motets. And um, we have uh, a volume with uh, German Christmas music. And then we have uh, Mozart's Requiem for three voices. And we also have um, Haydn's creation for SAM. And there's more, and we have also uh, Brahms' Schicksalslied and Schubert Deutsche Messe. I don't know if I've, I probably forgot something, but, but it's, uh, it's a qu quite uh, a variety of, of, uh, of styles and also of uh, composers from different uh, periods of the music history. And for instance, in the, in the German Christmas uh, volume, there are also things by um, Johannes Eckhart and uh, Bach. And we also have uh, traditional German Christmas music in the style of uh, Bossa Nova. So this is uh, just to say that that we um, we try to to create a diversity and and a, a big uh, selection of uh, styles and um, also so to speak opportunities uh, dependent on the time of year and, and things like that. There are pieces which I in the first reading have discarded as impossible four years ago, five years ago, when I first arranged them or approached them. And um, then returning to them I might have find f found a solution which, uh, with which I, I was uh, satisfied. Or if I have, um, you might imagine that, that uh, uh, pieces uh, with uh, not only triads but uh, sounds, accords with five or six um, tones in them to choose the right one so that the people think that they are hearing all the others and also with with some um, voice leadings which um, uh, pretends to go a certain way and we construct it, but I don't use the tone that you construct. You just think that you're here because you make a line out of it. It's, it's gestalt psychology. And, and um, sometimes it, it works and sometimes it don't. But it, it's great fun when it, when it functions. I have uh, expanded my knowledge of, of English music uh, with 300% uh, during this uh, and um, what a treasure, um, unknown to uh, other people um, and I of course also hope that because it's, it's, it's much easier yet uh, now to, to, to get hold of it uh, with this edition. And I, of course, hope that there will be much more exchange, uh, that, that Danish choirs will sing more traditional um, English church music, that um, the French would try what it's like to sing Brahms. Uh, maybe they do it, I, I imagine, but not that many. And uh, that uh, English choirs maybe would try 
to sing some Danish music, uh, although it's uh, not the first thing you would look for. Um, what I have tried uh, all the way through is to to keep the, si the same high standard of originals. Um, I think that uh, there are few pieces that I wouldn't like to conduct myself. Uh, and that has been a criteria also for me to, to say that this, this is valuable, this is worth preserving.